watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Well today we're going to be looking at a, an older knife, one I got off of eBay. This is by a company called Richards. Now Richards started out as a company all the way back in 1900 out of Solage in Germany. First known as Gebruder Ricard Sinsone and they produced pocket knives and straight razors. Then in 1932, uh, a fellow named Stefan Rikartz, who was a part of that company, moved over to Sheffield, England, and bought a small cutlery factory there. Uh, again, that was in 1932. Then by 1938, he had 400 employees, so he was really growing. His knives were pretty good quality and pretty well respected. And then the war broke out, so then they had to switch production over to, you know, making tools for the military, wrenches and so forth. And then at some point during the German Blitz, the factories that there were bombed and uh, had to quit making anything at all. Then after the war, they built a new factory, and uh, that would have been in, you know, late 40s. And the factory uh, started producing some really more mainstream stuff. They were a state-of-the-art factory that could uh, employ more unskilled workers because of the quality of the uh, machines that they used. They could stamp things out and wouldn't require as much hand work. So they started producing scissors and kitchen knives, pocket knives. That factory had led them to become one of the largest in all of England, and they were selling tens of thousands of knives, if not more. Started producing uh, knives that were more affordable and required less craftsmanship, but that was what the public and the masses were buying, so they did quite well. And uh, by 1960, they had some 700 employees hired and uh, became one of the largest cutleries in all of England. Had a market share of up to 60%, as a matter of fact. And they went on to be very successful. But in 1977, uh, they sold to Imperial. Uh, and then Imperial kind of struggled with the company. They didn't do very well to compete with the European market. And so they started fledgling. And then Imperial sold the company to a private firm. Uh, I think it was Western, and by uh, 1983, uh, the factory had closed. So they had a nice run there in the 50s and 60s when they sold just a ton of knives and, and into the 70s. And uh, the relatives of the original owner, uh, Stephen or Stefan Rickarts, uh, had became quite wealthy. One of the most successful uh, run cutlery companies of the 20th century, for, certainly in England, and uh, they made quite a profit. But in any case, I want to look at this knife a little bit here, and it's just an example of, you know, the knives they were making at the latter part of the company run, and uh, a lot of these knives were sold in tourist areas and sold as souvenirs, and this is probably an example of something that was made in the late 60s early 70s and you can see it has a lot of resemblances to the imperial knives of the time sold here in america so it's got the hollow cellulite celluloid style sh shell and then just the bolsters attached all in one piece so from here to here is all one stainless piece that's sort of hollowed out and then this plastic is laid over the top of it and then they clip the two shells on at either end with a little folding uh, clip there onto the liner and it's done on both sides so pretty cheaply made and uh, you can see there's not a lot of refinement to the blade itself but you know it is what it is and uh, looks much like an imperial and probably uh, probably not uh, really by coincidence seeing as how imperial ended up buying this company in 75. So, in any case, just a, a very affordable, very uh, inexpensive knife on eBay that I found out of Sheffield, England. I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, doing the research and the history on it. It has a connection to Imperial and uh, does look quite a bit like something that Imperial would have made. But, Good action on the blade. A uh, little bit of a weak drop into the channel, but uh, got good pull on the half stop and and the uh, 
full pull. Pretty decent uh, little sharpness on the blade. Pretty thin, cheap stamp blade. Nothing special, but fun nonetheless. And uh, see it polished up pretty well. Kind of attractive coloring on the handles. Sort of a swirl orange color. Sort of a cracked ice swirl, but in an orange color. So, yeah, interesting little knife. It's got the carbon blade on it, probably about two and three eighths inches long, then got a cutting edge about two and a quarter. So, pretty happy with it. Just something different from uh, eBay. You know, not a particularly uh, high quality knife, but to be able to afford something from. You know, Sheffield plant. It's kind of, kind of different, kind of neat, and kind of fits into a uh, a budget style knife that uh, anyone could afford. So yeah, if you want to own a Sheffield knife, it's not going to necessarily cost you just a ton of money. But uh, that's going to do it for my review and my history overview of the Richards Company. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell to be made aware of videos when they drop. We'll see you next time. Take care.